Well, good morning, everyone. It really is my privilege this morning to be speaking on Hallowed Be Your Name. And uh, just before I, I begin, can I just say what a relief it is to take my mask off. <laughs> there are some advantages in getting called to the front, <laughs> uh, even though there's a great responsibility as well. Um, confession, I have got a few really annoying habits to those who know me. Okay, but I'm only going to share one this morning. That's enough to be going on with. I don't want to give you too much information. I muddle names up. I don't know if anybody else here does that. Okay, if I happen to be talking to my granddaughter, Lucia, in the Italian name because her dad spent some time in Italy, I'll call her by her mum's name, my daughter. I'll call her Lois. But the next person I speak to, it's just as if I've got Lucia's name in my brain, and I'll then call them Lucia. And sometimes I can go through a whole list of names, including the cat. <laughs> and I mean that quite literally, before I get to the right person. Those on the receiving end may sort of cut me a bit of slack initially. They may find it amusing at first, but it's very annoying when it continues. And I've had one or two people turn around to me and after, after I've been talking to them for maybe 10 minutes and say, my name is not John, you know who I am. And I, oh, 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 sorry. Do you know, we're all protective of our names. Uh, we don't like our names abusing. We take that as an insult. Our name is important to us. It represents us and tells people something about, about us. And when people forget our names, it makes us feel like we aren't very important to them. And it's the same with God. His name is to be respected and honoured. In the prayer that Jesus taught, we commonly call it the Lord's Prayer, uh, it begins with, Our Father who art in heaven, and then it goes on to say, Hallowed be your name. The first request or petition of that prayer is hallowed be your name so what exactly does that mean we don't use that word hallow very often well it comes from the root word for holy and holy means to be set apart to be consecrated now in india for instance and i've never been to india by the way but you know i get to see these things on tv and all the rest um Cows are set apart as holy. Seems a bit strange, really, to me when there are some people literally starving while there's all that beef steak wandering the streets. <laughs> anyway, when we say that God is holy, we are affirming that He is altogether different from us. He is set apart, He is special, He is unique. So what this petition is asking is that God would make his name holy. But hang on, that strikes me as strange. If God is perfectly holy, how can this prayer make any sense? He can't be more holy than he is already. He can't become more glorious. So what is Jesus actually saying? Well, when we pray these words, we're asking God, we're saying, Father, cause your great and holy name to be honored, revered, exalted, treasured above all things everywhere in the world. And, uh, you know, I've occasionally heard people re refer to God in a very flippant way, the man upstairs, etc. Um, but Jesus reminds us that God is in the heavens, our Father who is in heaven. He's not the big man upstairs. He's the majestic, the mighty king, the glorious one. Solomon put it this way, Do not be rash with your mouth, nor let your heart be hasty to utter a word before God. For God is in heaven, and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Rather so bring scripture that for someone like me, who's always been a bit of a chatterbox. The truth is that God's name is not hallowed in this world, in our society. In fact, God's name is used very flippantly, 
used as a curse word, used frivolously in every part of our culture. Even the abbreviation OMG is shorthand for Oh my God. It's terrible. And I even hear children saying that without even thinking about it because they hear it all the time in their homes and in the places that they go. So let's ask the question, what's in a name? What is in the name? Well, at the most basic level, it enables us to tell one person apart from another. So you could say a name is a, la a label. And what's more, it gets our attention. When I was a, a TV engineer in a, in a previous life, <laughs> one day I was working in a customer's house on the television set. And it was in the days when uh, television sets were in big, enormous cabinets, certainly color sets. Big. Anybody remember those days? Not the, not the slim things that you can stick on the wall the, nowadays. Okay, and I'd got my head right inside this enormous cabinet. And there was a little boy in the room being a bit of a nuisance. And just then his mum came in and shouted, Alan, what do you think you are doing? <laughs> Hearing my name shouted like that, I banged my head violently <laughs> as I came, as I emerged to see what was going on. And the customer looked at me and said, oh, is Alan your name as well? <laughs> I said, yes, it just took me back a year or two. To when my mum was <laughs> getting a grip on me for something. It, as a label, it definitely got my attention. But more than just a label, uh, it tells you something about that person very often. In fact, many years ago, surnames used to tell people what you did or where you came from. Uh, Jill, my wife, her mother, my mother-in-law, had the maiden name of Pickering. So that's a clue as to where the family might have originated from. Someone with the name Miller would probably have worked in a mill and ground corn, <laughs> produced flour. Or someone called Smith might have worked in, in a smithy, been a blacksmith, shoeing horses or whatever. Uh, the name Martin apparently means warlike because it comes from the Roman god of war called Mars. So Martin. Um, I went to the internet, that fount of all knowledge, to look up the meaning of my surname, Coyle. Apparently it can be a Christian name as well. And it's of Irish and Gaelic origin, and the meaning of Coyle is leader in battle or follows the battle. So I've got an idea what my lot were up to <laughs> in the past. Personally, though, I stay as far away as I can from any conflict or any battles. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say that most of my dad's side of the family have been soldiers or involved with the military in some way, even to my Irish cousins to the very present day. So many of them have, 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 have been serving or are serving in different places in the world. So maybe there is something in this name business. But you know, names were very important to Israel. Jonathan means gift of God. Do you know, before we named any of our children, we, we actually got one of these books, dictionaries, whatever you call them, of names, to find good names, good meanings, you know. I've seen little boys with t-shirts that say things like, you know, I'm a terror, and I think I would never put anything like that on my child. <laughs> you know, they have been terrors, most of them, but I wouldn't have anything like that prophesying over them something negative. So I've always tried to find a good positive, good, uh, godly name for, for, for children. And I'm sure you've done the same. Jonathan then means gift of God. Um, Jesus means to deliver, to rescue, or savior. So the angel said to Mary, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Or was it the angel said that to Joseph? Just a little bit confused there. No wonder the Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. A good name is better than precious ointment. And throughout the Old Testament, God progressively revealed himself through, by making himself known through names that he gave them to know him by. And once he became that name, it's as if God you know, was that for them. The name Jehovah has the meaning of the self-existent one or the eternal one. 
Here are some compound names that reveal the nature of his many characteristics. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. Jesus fulfilled that promise. He became righteousness for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When Gideon saw the angel of the Lord when he was being commissioned to go and deliver Israel from the Midianites, uh, Gideon went into a bit of a flap and a panic. And he said, oh, that's it, I'm going to die now. I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Um, but the Lord spoke to him peace. And so he revealed himself as Jehovah Shalom. The Lord said, peace. And Gideon called him Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. I think it was Gideon's wife, I'm just trying to remember the story, I haven't looked it up recently, who said to him, for goodness sake, Gideon, get a grip. If God was going to kill you, he'd have done it already. Of course he's not going to kill you. <laughs> um, but, you know, Gideon was concerned about that. In Exodus 15:26. Spoken to the Israelites in the wilderness, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord heals. Some of you here will know the Lord as Jehovah Rapha, I'm sure. Um, and then there was that occasion when the Amalekites were attacking Israel in the wilderness. And as long as Moses held his hands up in prayer, Joshua and the guys who were doing the fighting were prevailing. But as Moses grew tired, they sat him on a stone and he started to get tired and his hands came down. They started to lose. So uh, they, they got people to hold his hands up above his head so he could do that. Uh, and it says there, when Moses held his hands aloft, God gave victory over Amalek and they named the Lord, the Lord is my banner. A banner, you raise a banner in, in, in times of conflict, don't you? This name reveals to us the fact that the Lord is our victory in every situation. Um, in Old Testament times, sometimes the, when the army would go out to war, the musicians would be out in front. Good arrangement, isn't it? <laughs> well, actually, the arrangement, the reason why that was happening was not because the army were cowering behind them, was because they were praising God. They were going out with praise and honor and lifting up the name of the Lord. That, that, that inspires confidence in you, doesn't it? Uh, and in front of them would be the banner, the banner carriers, basically stating or proclaiming that their king, our king, is stronger and more able to defeat than any other king. Jesus is our banner. Jesus is our victory. He's our uh, victorious king. And he shed his blood on the cross for us. Then there's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. I once heard somebody rather facetiously say, Jehovah Jiro. You know, in the days when <laughs> the benefit system was paid through gyros. Well, but the Lord is our provider. Uh, and Abraham called him that. The Lord's provision shall be seen on the day when he was um, off, about to offer Isaac. And then he said, the Lord will provide himself a ram, and, or, or provide himself a lamb. And uh, he found the ram in the thicket. David, of course, called the Lord Jehovah Rohi, the Lord's my shepherd. Psalm 23. Um, and then there's another one, which is, uh, I, I d wasn't really aware of this one, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. This name is the promise of God dwelling in the midst of his people. Do you know that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit and that the Spirit of God dwells in you if indeed you're born again and belong to Jesus? Praise his name. To sum it all up then, the fullest expression of all that God is was manifested through the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. He is the name above all names. Hallowed be your name. Not only do we hallow the name of the Father, but we hallow the name of Jesus, our glorious Lord. 
But there's another point here about a person's name, and that is it carries that person's authority. Have you looked at your passport recently? <laughs> you might think, well, my passport's irrelevant. I don't think I'm going to be able to travel much. Well, some people can travel <laughs> at the moment. Some parts of the world are open. Um, I looked at my passport, and uh, I wrote down what it said. I was really impressed. It puffed my chest out, did this. Her Britannic Majesty's Principal Secretary of State requests and requires in the name of Her Majesty all those whom it may concern to allow the bearer to pass freely without let or hindrance and to afford the bearer such assistance and protection as may be necessary. It sounds rather grand, don't you think? The name of the Queen signifies authority. Sometimes the police will, you know, raid a place and batter a door down and say, in the name of the law, open up, come out, whatever. The whole weight of the British Crown is behind that instruction on the passport. When we say that the name of God is hallowed, it means we recognize God has got authority. That's why we're told in the second commandment, you shall not misuse or you shall not take in vain the name of the Lord your God. So what does that really mean in practice? Well, it means that you mustn't use God's name as a swear word. You mustn't tell a lie when you promise in the name of the Lord. You stand in court and say, I swear by Almighty God. I mean, I know you can just solemnly affirm now if you wish. But if you, if you take that oath, then you're promising by the name of Almighty God. And you must be sure to fulfill and to tell the truth. Um, a name means more than uh, just think... Uh, can mean another thing when thinking of authority it can mean that you're acting on behalf of um, if I act in the name of someone it means I'm acting as if I was that person and had their authority so going back to the days when I used to repair TV sets for a living um, in the workshop I'd often order components and parts and I would uh, I would sign the order for the workshop on behalf of my firm. I couldn't afford to pay for the stuff I was buying. I remember once, one of the bosses, in, uh, I worked for another company that had uh, uh, two, two, two or three partners in the firm, and one of them came in to me one day and said, do you realize how much this lot's costing? And I said, well, you want TVs repairing? Give us the parts. <laughs> Fair enough, if you don't want to pay them, just tell your customers that uh, you can't have a workshop with no components. Um, so it, what I'm saying is, I was spending money that wasn't my money and buying things I couldn't have afforded to buy, but I was doing it with the authority and in the name of my employer. And you know, in the same way as Christians, we can act in Jesus' name. We can pray for things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Praise his holy name. Isn't it wonderful when you see prayers answered because you've approached God not in your righteousness or your name, but in the name of his Son, Jesus, who loved us and gave himself for us on the cross. So the name of a person has got several meanings. It can be a label to say, who they are to d distinguish one person from another. It can tell us something about that person. It can signify the authority of that person. And with their agreement, it might enable someone to act on behalf of that person. You know, as we gather together Sunday mornings or via YouTube, we have the opportunity to lift up the name. We're lifting up the name of Jesus. It it's quite strange when we're worshipping with our masks on, Fortunately, those of you watching on YouTube can't see what we look like in the congregation. But when you're lifting your hands and the chorus is up in front of you on the screen, you want to sing. And it's really hard not to. Um, but, we, but we're still lifting up the name of the Lord in our hearts, in our minds, and uh, muttering into our masks. Um, as you get alone with God and pray and sing to him, you are hallowing his name. 
I want to read some words that King David wrote, basically as I'm drawing to a close here. In Psalm 20, this is what David said, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices, Selah. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. Some trust in big bank balances, etc. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O oh Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. We trust in the name of the Lord our God. Will you trust him? Are you trusting him? He's trustworthy. The name of the Lord, we're told, is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Now the tower will do you no good if when the enemy comes, you just say, yeah, it's all right, we've got a tower over there. The enemy can't touch me. I tell you what, if you don't get in the tower, he can. You need to be in the tower. It's no use unless you run to it. Have you run to this strong tower? Do you know the Lord is your saviour? Have you put your confidence and trust in him? Um, salvation is found in no one else, preached Peter. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Jesus is the saviour, but are you saved? It may be true he's the saviour, and it is true he's the saviour, but you need to receive him as the saviour. Trust that name, trust in him for it to benefit you. So when we say, hallowed be your name, we are praying a mighty prayer. May we never misuse God's name. Okay. May we call upon that name and be saved. And let me encourage anyone who's hearing my voice uh, today or whenever that to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. One final quote, Psalm 115, verse 1. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to hand over now to, to Dave. He's got the privilege of taking his mask off while I put mine on. <laughs> All together. Oh, you can't speak, can you? <laughs>